my my teacher for the metaverse has been funnily enough my 9 year old niece you can probably go back in time right developer host that property and in the metaverse and then you can just watch it Let's try to define, say, subjectively or objectively, what a metaverse is. Uh, my my teacher for the metaverse has been, funnily enough, my nine-year-old niece. So, you know, I'd like to ask you, uh, Aditya, uh, what is a server? <laughs> I, uh, there's no wrong answer to this, mind. Right. Uh, a server is something that hosts uh, a website and helps two systems that's it. communicate. I mean, that's a full stop. You're yeah. right. Yeah. You know, yeah. they give me a number of definitions. But to my yeah. niece, uh, while she was showing me her Minecraft servers, uh, she like, Chacha, servers where you hang out. Boom. You know, like, I, I, it just kicked all the technicalities of the metaverse out of my head for a second. And, you know, a huge realization came that this is not something that's being built for me. I need to understand it more from the point of view, the way she does it. And now, like every interaction, every Zoom call, every, you know, FaceTime call that I have with her, uh, I, I, I take like half an hour out of the family time and I figure out what she's doing on Minecraft and what are the worlds is she visiting. She had her own skins gallery. I mean, I had to tell her that if she had this on open seas, she's nine, she could have been making money. So, uh, you know, the possibilities, I mean, they're endless, man. I literally get goosebumps thinking about it. So I think it's best to just leave it at that. Yeah, uh, I think Minecraft has been considered, you know, the OG metaverse uh, with the best adoption. Sure. And what do you think, with your experience, what do people uh, do in such metaverse as of now? Um, and as an extension, we are also going to get into, you know, what what possibly can people do in the future? Uh, Rohan, your thoughts on this? For sure, man. Uh, I think personally speaking, for me, I would achieve metaverse when we're in a ready player one sort of scenario uh, that is always been in my head and recently the oculus quest that i've got uh I've actually gone ahead and spent i think over five to eight hundred dollars on it and downloaded various apps virtual desktop and i can see if you know this technology uh grows really fast computation grows fast and it becomes smaller at the end, this is the way you would like to deliver, you know, future computing devices to the masses because this is cost effective and yep. uh, the penetration is much higher. But like I've been struggling to figure out how to play Half-Life Alex on my system. I've downloaded the game. I've got the VR headset. I've paid for virtual desktop. Uh, there's some issues with the path files, you know, this and that. But essentially what I realized is this needs to get a little cheap on that. Because besides all this, I even needed to upgrade my router to a 5G so that it could handle the pixel streaming aspect. Uh, if I didn't want to use the cable, the cable, again, you know, has got a particular price point to it. So uh, currently, I always have my eyes open, even from an investment standpoint towards uh, hardware companies. And those are the news that I really closely follow because I think true innovations actually got to come out with groundbreaking hardware. Yeah, uh, correct. But I do want to ask, like, since you have uh, some experience with using and uh, and exploring different use cases of Oculus. Like most of my friends, they bought an Ocul Oculus. They tried a few thing things. Now uh, they only use it for you know uh, feeling like they're exercising at a beach. That is that is the gotcha. most common use case I've seen among my friends. Now now they wear uh, the headset on their uh, face. They they the usual concern two concerns uh, I've seen is one that it feels like a, you're wearing a shoebox on your head right now. The other thing is, uh, like, initially when you start, you get a headache, say, in maybe 15 minutes of usage. But with, with prolonged usage, you get, what's your stamina? Like, how long can you go uh, using it? I come from the gaming fraternity. So, uh, like, a little bit of discomfort for, you know, screen time is something, some somewhat of a trade-off I'm ready to make. But even in that scenario, uh, I think 40 minutes is my limit where it actually starts getting a little sweaty, you got to take it off, wipe it out and then yeah. back on again. So in hotter climates, definitely it might be an issue. But, you know, using virtual desktop and a couple of these other apps, the way I'm watching films on YouTube, particularly there was a Day of the Dead, I think a 4K print is available for free to watch on YouTube. 
I could see that in IMAX quality, man. Like in terms of the screen size, and that was phenomenal. So I think cinema halls are going to take a huge hit if this takes off because this personal cinema experience with special audio was it was too good. It was really too good. Yeah, uh, I, I I have experienced different things on a on on a VR, and I was surprised. You know, uh, the technology actually was way ahead of my expectations when I first tried it. I was yeah. like. Why is this thing not viral already? Like this is some out so, of the world experience. Psychologically, you know, while playing Spider Man and all, uh, a fear of heights manifested itself. Mm-hmm. I mean, I know I'm standing on the ground, but when I look down, I'm looking down from a skyscraper and my knees start shaking. But when yeah. I take the headset off, it disappears. So you know, if you bump your elbow and your hand controller gives you a jerk, you might feel like a little pain on your elbow. <laughs> like that's your mind playing tricks on you. So with haptic yeah. feedback suits and all that stuff, I can definitely see Ready Player One being more of a documentary than a film. Yeah, you're right. I think uh, we we gotta buy that extra uh, safe suitcases that they buy, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's that's five years. That. That's a little far away. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> VR and AR, right? Uh, that's always a debate. But as Rohan said, uh, there's a more imaginary aspect to what VR is bringing uh, to us. So we can. simulate any any particular experience which is digitally possible at least uh, if not physically possible uh, through just wearing a headset wherein ar is more of a, a super organic extension of our experience in the physical world wherein we will have the opportunity or the uh, ability to see through uh, and experience the world as it is as if we were wearing normal glasses i think that is that is uh, one technology i'm very very excited about Hopefully, yeah, uh, to see again, in the next uh, three four years. I just want to loop it into what Nikita had said about education. So the same technology applied there. You know, if you have students from NID and MIT trying to work on a design project, uh, mm-hmm. with you know live rendering of a AutoCAD object on on whatever platform they're on, I think uh, the possibilities from there are limitless, man. Right? Like, Uh, and yeah. you can just add it to the real estate as well, right? So let's just say if you are sitting, like Bangalore is famous for its traffic, right? If mm-hmm. you are on one end of the Bangalore and you have to visit a property, what if the developer hosts that property and in the metaverse, and then you can just watch it through VR, so you can experience the property, you can experience the uh, entire society or area, right? So. Like applications are endless. Yeah. In fact, Tisha, there I've played around with a Matterport camera. So the Matterport actually allows you to scan the entire, you know, apartment with space with spacing on x, y, and z axis, and then you can build like an entire VR setup of it. Yeah. And this is no coding required. It basically just stitches it on the Matterport app itself. There is an app called Gravity Sketch. Wherein a uh, car designer, yeah, blend, and... Blender, the Gravity Sketch, all these programs you can do that. And also, yeah. man, we're headed towards a particular point where you know whatever you design in the metaverse, you can essentially three D print that out, even if it's a house. Yeah. So again, like the possibilities are endless. Like any intricate design that traditional you know building methods can't get you, uh, yeah. they'll three D print it for you. Yeah, a lot of the modular uh, curvature designs that we particularly see in the metaverse right now, uh, which architecturally are not so easy to build, I think 3D printing is a very good solution. Yeah, uh, to that we can easily switch up and quickly also, uh, yeah. you know, in a relatively short time frame. Then there was another use case, say travel, uh, and this is very subjective and subjective and fascinating now because travel is always considered, you know, by uh moving from one city to the other exploring a different culture but tourism and travel also have so many other aspects right so tushar what are your thoughts how how do you think metaverse and virtual reality augmented reality all of this is going to affect tourism and travel yeah so uh, there are two kind of travels right as you rightly mentioned personal travel and then there is professional travel so professional travel there is a definite use case right as we were discussing because of covid people are used to go into zoom meetings and then in we are always trying to find out how do we collaborate better right let's just say if a designer is working on an app how we can collaborate so there is a great use case of metaverse where designers through avatars can collaborate or the team can collaborate and then in personal travel right anyways always it's better right you go and 
experience the real thing but then let's just say if you are traveling and going to a museum if you are traveling or going to an monument right where you want to know the history of that monument or you want to know or if you are visiting a art gallery where you want to learn about the art gallery all the images and everything what is all there so that i strongly feel metaverse we can play, play a huge role so you can probably go back in time right you can visit the greek history while with the greeks in avatars which can be a travel back in time so yeah i think opportunities can be tremendous though it will be different from your physical travel but then there are other things as well right apart from phys physical which are not possible in the physical world world which you can show in metaverse you can always experience you can go to a different country in physical world but then you cannot go and travel back in time and experience probably let's just say greek architecture how was the roman civilization was there or how was indian civilization was there so yeah you read it in books but you can uh, uh, travel or experience it that will be truly amazing i think uh, you're right and there's another aspect right which you mentioned that travel uh, without moving from one place to the other there is a uh, you know you want to explore their cuisines or their culture and learn more about the architecture there that that is also an important part of traveling and uh, reading reading books was considered one way to learn about something without actually going there and this is so much more immersive metaverse or virtual reality right this is so much more immersive in terms of feedback uh, visualization uh, imagination all of that can be fed very easily to an individual so i think uh, you brought in some really good points about uh, traveling and uh, metaverse